All right. Um, so uh, you may be thinking like, okay, well, you know, I, I'm doing a, a bunch of analyses and a bunch of things to my data, but my ultimate goal is to create some kind of inference or to create a visualization that I can share with people so I can talk about the results of my really awesome research project. Uh, so that's where DataViz comes in, and R is a fantastic language and environment for creating visualizations. Um, so even compared to things like Python um, and some other kind of graphical user interfaces, the, the graphs that R can make are really fantastic. So uh, hopefully this will be really beneficial for you. But the, uh, the only downside of that is that it can be really challenging to learn how to make those visualizations, especially um, uh, as we'll see later today, how complex they can get. Um, so we wanted to first start us off uh, pretty gently with this tool called Eskies. Um, and so we'll talk more about that in this module. All right, so Eskies is its own package. It does not come with Tidyverse or installed already in base R, so you'll probably need to install it if you haven't already. Uh, so remember, that is our install packages, uh, and we'll install packages as skis and load the skis package using that library function. So I'll head on over and let me go ahead and set up a space to work here. And uh, I'll get rid of this. I'm not really going to need it. And I'll create an R chunk to put some code. And I want to load the Eskies package. OK. OK, so what is Eskies? Uh, it's a really helpful uh, package, and it's uh, created based on a uh, a set of R tools that can, can, can create apps in R. Um, and it's a really uh, essentially a tool to help you get used to creating plots in R. It's a little bit more interactive, a little bit more point and click than uh, the code we've been seeing. So it's a, it's a nice, uh, gentle introduction to it. OK, so how do we actually get started using this tool. Uh, so the only thing, thankfully, the only function that we actually really need to remember here is this function called eskies r right here. So this function is going to prompt another window to open in your R Studio session. And from there, you can start creating plots right away. Um, and so what you want to give this Eskies R function is some kind of data frame or a tibble. That's the only argument we need to just get started. We'll, we'll show how you can kind of customize this app just a little bit in a moment. But to get started, all we need is to give it a data set. So let's see how that looks. So Eskies R, and you can see it's coming from the Eskies package. And let's give it that data set MT cars, the, the one that lives in R by default. And what happens when I run this? It's going to go ahead and open this uh, nice interactive window. OK, and so you can see I've got a couple things uh, already. Uh, don't want to jump in quite yet, but um, I can see over here I've got some maybe some choices um, a, a drop down potentially that'll open up. And I've got some attributes, X, Y, fill, color, size. These are all things about my plot that we'll, we'll show in just a moment. Um, and then I've got some other toggles to play with down here. OK, uh, so I mentioned that you can customize this Eskies R function a little bit. And uh, how we do that is with this option viewer. Um, so let's say we don't want this actually to open up as a 
uh, window in our, our studio, but rather we'd view, we'd like to view the app in our browser. It's just a little easier for us to work with. Um, so let me X out of this and show us how we can do that. So same, same function, but let's provide another argument this time. We'll do viewer equals and just tell it we want it to open in the browser. OK, so uh, this will open it up in your browser window. The sizing may be a little different depending on the settings of your browser. Um, so you can you know, zoom in and out as needed. Um, and you'll see that it's just hosting it locally. It's not actually contacting a website. It's just using your browser to run this app. OK, so that's the app, but let's actually get started playing around with what it can do. So the first thing that we'll want to do is play around with selecting variables. So to select variables with the skis, you can essentially just drag and drop those items at the top of the app to the respective axis uh, that you would like the variable to be plotted on. Uh, so let's say I want miles per gallon on the x-axis. And the cool thing is it assumes that I want to make a histogram. If I only have one variable, uh, you can see that has populated over here on the left. And uh, let's say I want to do um, horsepower on the x-axis or the y-axis. All right. Um, so it has uh, created a uh, point plot or a scatter plot. It's kind of uh, made a guess based on the fact that I have an X and Y continuous variables. Okay. The really, really cool thing about SKIs is that it does translate into once you become more familiar with uh, the code that you'll need to actually recreate your plots. So you're thinking, OK, well, I made this really sweet uh, scatter plot. I, I'm kind of seeing a negative relationship here. But how would I go about creating that based on code? Uh, so you can click on this little uh, toggle down here on the bottom right. Let me zoom in just a tad. Um, and so this pops up some code that you can copy to clipboard. Uh, you can also insert that code into your script. I'm going to go ahead and clip that, uh, click that and head back to our studio. And I can see it stuck this code in to my, uh, my code chunk here. Um, and it also loaded this library called ggplot2 that we'll talk about in the next module. Um, so you don't need to understand really what this code is doing quite yet, um, but just know that it was able to take that plot that you made with the skis and render that into some code uh, that you can use later on. And so if I were to change anything with the skis app, I could certainly copy and insert into my into my uh, um, uh, code chunk once again, or or just copy and paste it if I want. OK, so as I was mentioning, uh, SKIs automatically assumes you want a certain plot type, but you may want to play around and change that manually. Um, a good example of this is maybe having bar plots and wanting to change it to a box plot or something like that. Uh, so let's see. Um, we've got the scatter plot here, but let's change it to uh, a different kind of plot. Um, and it says, OK, well, we've got two continuous variables. It's probably not reasonable to do a box plot here. It kind of it, it knows we can't really do that. Um, but we could make a line plot. We could try to connect those dots. So let's see what that looks like. OK, um, maybe not the most sense for miles per gallon versus horsepower, but I can change the type of plot if I want to. And uh, could do area. 
and we could do i'm not sure what tile will look like that doesn't really make too much sense but um but yeah we can uh, choose from several different types of plots okay um so we can also add something called facets to our plots um, and so facets create multiple plots right next to each other uh, based on uh, d different values of a third variable. Um, so let's see what that looks like in practice. Um, and let's go back to our, our point plot. I think that looked really nice. Um, so let's say we want to break up this plot. We don't want everything together. We want to actually uh, partition it out by the number of cylinders the car has. So let's drag this variable all the way over to the facet bucket and break those cars up by number of cylinders. So um, it is a little bit small, but I can zoom in if I need to. And of course I can adjust these um, in a little bit here. Um, but I can see that the uh, plot has now been broken up into these three facets. Uh, this one on the left is the four cylinder. The one in the middle is the six cylinder and the one on the eight is, or one on the right is the eight cylinder. So uh, in cases where I want to break up the data based on some third variable, the facet bucket can be really, really handy for this. OK, uh, sometimes uh, it's, it's useful to actually make the size of the points or the line uh, be representative of some variable. Uh, so you can do this as well. Um, and especially if you need your plot to be black and white instead of different colors for different variables. So um, let's say uh, I want to make uh, make horsepower in size. Um, so now the size of the uh, point, uh, I know we're using this variable twice, but uh, the size of the point is now uh, uh, equivalent or on the same scale as the fact or the variable that is in question in this case the the horsepower variable we could also do a different one drag it and replace it and um and we can see that the uh the size of those dots has changed um you can pretty easily swap them out. Um, this wouldn't make too much sense because we've already faceted based on cylinder, but you could do that if you want. All right, color, fun stuff. So uh, for plots with points, uh, you can use the color region to change the coloring according to some variable. Um, importantly, the fill um, bucket. So I've got the fill bucket and the color bucket right next to each other. Uh, these are usually used for different kinds of plots. So color is for, you could think of like a solid entity, like a point, um, but fill is for big blocks like a box plot or a bar plot. Um, so if you kind of get mixed up, which is which, don't worry about it. You could either try either one and uh, just kind of use trial and error there. Um, so let's say I want um, the color to also be, uh, let's do a different variable. Let's not reuse a cylinder. Let's do uh, the weight one more time, drag that into color. Um, and so uh, we're going all the way from, I think it was 2000 some to five um, and not only do we see the size is meaningful in some way, uh, but the color is as well. So I can see these lighter um, points here are um, higher up in, in weight. And again, I can just kind of play around with which uh, variable that I want uh, by dragging and replacing it in the box. All right, so you can change the overall appearance with this appearance tab down here on the bottom. 
Uh, so let's play around with that. Uh, so first things first, um, I can use a color palette, which is pretty cool. Um, so I could choose from a, a bunch of different options here. Like I have, I have lots of things to choose from. I think the Viridis options are really fantastic because they are um, like different color vision friendly. Uh, so the Viridis uh, palette is really fantastic, but I'm, I'm a little partial to the, the Magma and Inferno ones. Um, so let's see what this does for us. Um, so cool, I can see that my QSEC variable uh, has been changed. It's got the kind of gold color on top and the purple color on the bottom. And uh, let's say I don't want uh, circles, I want uh, diamonds. Could change that. And uh, the theme is really cool. It's a way of changing the overall appearance of the plot. So this is like things like the grid lines, the shading, uh, things like that. Um, and so maybe I want the classic theme. And this is going to look a little bit different. It's got these kind of boxes for the facets up here and a solid line for the axis um, and then different tick marks. Or um, I could do a gray theme. And this uh, has these really nice boxes and grid lines too. I uh, can also change where the legend is. Uh, so it's below or to the left um, or up above. Or if I don't want the legend at all, uh, not always best practice, but I could cut those out too if I wanted to. Okay, uh, so for uh, scatter plots, it can be helpful to add a smoothing line or a trend line to your data. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. Uh, so let's actually uh, narrow down all of the options we have right now. So let's actually get rid of the facet variable and put all of our data together once more. We'll also get rid of that uh, size variable. Okay, um, so let's see if we can't add a trend line here. Um, so up here, you see this option to add a smooth line. Let's go ahead and click yes. And it's giving me some warning. Uh, okay, you've dropped some data. Did you, um, and, we'll, and we'll talk about this again in a second. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and close that. Um, and I can see it's kind of added this trend line to those point data. All right, um, so you may want to fix the labels or the title um, of your plot. You can do that with this uh, toggle down here on the left side. And so uh, maybe I want to give it the title cars data. And I can change the font and size. So maybe I want this really big. And uh, maybe I want the x-axis to have a specific label. Uh, maybe I don't want MPG. Maybe I want miles per gallon. All right. And maybe I want that a little bit bigger, too. All right, um, so while you're working on your plots, you can easily view the data. So taking a look at this table here, I can scroll through the data if I need to, uh, just like with the uh, preview the data button that you have in our studio, you can sort them um, and just further look at your data if you need to while you're doing your plotting.
All right, so this is pretty important. Um, because a skis is its own app, it's uh, based on this package of tools called Shiny in R. Um, it's running an app from R Studio. And if you notice, uh, when I go back to my R Studio, uh, I don't have my little carrot here in the console anymore. And if I hit enter, uh, it's not able to actually run any code. And that's because the console is busy running the app. And so if I want to actually run some code, um, I'll need to hit the stop button or actually close out of a skis entirely to get back to R. So uh, let's do that. Uh, we'll interrupt. And if you go back to a skis, you'll notice that it has kind of killed the app. It's all grayed out now. So we'll go ahead and X that out. Unfortunately, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna lose the work. Uh, we could still copy the code if we needed to. Okay, um, so let's uh, play a little bit with some examples uh, with the skis. So we'll use the circ data set um, and uh, load that up from the JHUR package. So let's go ahead and copy that and put it into R. We'll load up that library and then read in the circ data. Um, and so remember, this is those bus lines that we were talking about yesterday. All right. Um, and let's go ahead and take a quick look at that data. Uh, we'll use the glimpse function that we talked about with subsetting. All right, um, so I've got a day column, date, orange boardings, um, lots of variables here, uh, and then the daily ridership. And uh, let's also create a, uh, we talked a little bit yesterday about the long versus wide data and how they're gonna be useful. That long data is gonna be really useful for plotting. Um, so let's go ahead and take um this uh code here which will take the wide data set it will pipe it into pivot longer and it's going to pivot all of those columns containing the uh the word boarding and it's going to create a column route and harness those values to a column called boardings so let's go ahead and copy all of this right here and we'll take it and put it into our R code. So we've already got the wide circ data, uh, but let's put the long circ data in here too. We'll go ahead and run that. And let's take a glimpse of the long circ data. All right. Um, and so we could even open it up in the viewer here, scroll all the way over, and we can see that that uh, before we had lots of columns, but we've changed it just a little bit uh, so that we have the route, um, at least for the boardings, we have a route column and a boardings column. So those might come in handy uh, in a moment here. Okay, uh, we already took a quick look at it. All right, uh, so let's play around right now, uh, making a plot of boardings by day uh, for different routes. So how, how would we do this? Um, so it's gonna be tricky with this wide data set. And um, so let's, let's play around uh, with this. So we'll do this keys R of the wide circ data. And again, I want to open it up in my browser. I think that is kind of nice. Um, you have a little more flexibility with like the size of the window and stuff. All right. Um, so uh, you'll notice right away I have um, all of these 
columns here in blue, and that's going to indicate that it's a, a number type column. Um, and then this day column here uh, is uh, the day of the week, um, and the date is uh, is um, the the like number of um, the actual date itself. Okay, um, so let's say we want um, our uh, daily ridership. Let's have that be our um, y variable. Um, so we're using the y data set right now. Okay, um, and our warnings typically we'll get a warning if there's NAs in our data because GG or um, SKIs doesn't know how to handle NA data, and so it typically will give us a warning message for that. Um, but I can see now that I have a histogram of the daily data. Um, and then if I'm thinking about, all right, well, um, I want to break it up by the purple line and the orange line, you know, maybe I want uh, different facets for that. Um, I'm not sure what I put in the facet, right? So like something like this um, is not really going to work, right? Because this is the, the number ridership for that line. Um, and so this is an opportunity where, you know, maybe that long format is more appropriate. Um, but I could still do something like day, probably in the fill. And I think I've crashed it here. Um, but yeah, the wide data is not really going to get us to where we want to go. Um, so let's actually close out of this with the wide data and reopen ISKIs with the long data. Yeah, see, it's... <laughs> It took a minute there, it was thinking. Um, but if I wanted to do uh, daily ridership and then like break that down by day of the week, uh, because this is a histogram or kind of like a bar plot, um, I would put this in fill and not in color. Um, you can see it, this, it just outlines the boxes. Um, I could put it in both if I wanted to. Um, but if I take that out of color, it brings back the, the kind of pale white line here. All right, um, and so of course you can continue to play around with the appearance, the plot options, all of that stuff. Um, okay, so let's actually bring back the uh, the long data so we could break it down by the purple line and green line and, and such. So I'm gonna X out here. And uh, you can see all the messaging from his skis, right? It's, uh, it's telling you that it's launching the app and then it's like, oh, uh, okay, uh, I can't plot any, uh, in any NAs, uh, so what do I do here? <laughs> I'm gonna give you a warning message. Um, so I'll go ahead and hit that stop button to, to stop the app. Okay, um, so let's do a skis of the long CERC data set. And same thing, I want it in my browser. Okay, launches that. Um, and now I can see that I've got uh, this um, route is a categorical variable that I can actually use. So uh, let's take boardings to um, the Y axis one more time. Um, so I've got uh, counts in different bins here. Um, but let's say I want X to be uh, those different um, routes. Okay. Um, so this looks kind of weird. It seems like it's stacked up every observation um, in in one giant column plot. Um, I've got the different uh, categories here on the x-axis and then the boardings on the y-axis, um, but maybe a more appropriate plot would be a box plot. So let me go over here and actually select that box plot and get rid of these Error messagings for all those NAs that we had. Um, and so this is a, a little bit nicer for comparing those different uh, routes. And, and maybe I actually change the name of the value in the data or change it in the plot data rendering this plot. Um, but I can already kind of see um, what's happening by those different green, purple, orange routes. Um, again, I can kind of play around with the color a little bit. Um, so remember, color is changing the solid parts or the line. Um, so if I want the whole box to be colored, I'd put that in the fill uh, category. And um, maybe this is where I'd want to play around with the 
custom color schemes a little bit because uh, here green and the green color are matched up, uh, but this orange route is this blue color, so that's not really appropriate. <laughs> we might want them to reflect the actual color of the route. Um, so uh, kind of cool, cool there. And uh, let's see. Um, we could also, again, we, we kind of showed how you could break down those columns by day of the week, but let's say uh, we wanted to take day over to facet. This might take a moment to render because it's lots of data, um, but then I can see it broken down by uh, day of the week and the different routes seem to have kind of the same pattern no matter what day of week it is. Um, yeah, you can do a custom colors. I'm, I, w I don't want to say off the top of my head that uh, Eskies will let you do that. Uh, yeah, okay, so it looks like we can. Um, I'm more used to doing it from the code perspective, but uh, let's say we want this one to be orange. Looks like we can do that. Um, yeah, so uh, so yeah, it uh, looks cool. We're able to, to change the colors even in Eskies. So um, again, this is just a really powerful tool for you to generate some of that code to start with. Or if you're just like, you know, I, I know pretty well what I want and I don't need some kind of crazy customized plot, um, Eskies is perfect for that. Okay, um, so this is a pretty short module. I want to make sure we get some time for a hands-on practice here. Um, so use the Eskies R function um, on a data set. Make sure you install Eskies first because it's not included with base R or the tidyverse. Uh, but you use the data set as the first argument, and then you can also use the viewer equals browser argument to launch it on your on Chrome or on Safari or whatever you're using. Um, the code can be copied. This is really powerful because, uh, you know, if I want to insert this into my script, I can hit that button and then go back to R and see that I've created this uh, really nice bit of code. Um, and then let's say I close a skis, um, I stop the app, and then let's say I want to run this again. I can recreate that in my uh, plot window. Um, I can zoom in here and I could even save that as like a, a, um, a PDF or as like a PNG or something. Okay, um, and um, it's easier if the data set you take is in long form. So we saw that it was a little tricky to divide up our data by the different routes um, if we hadn't already pivoted our data. So if you're finding like you've got your data set in SPs and you're like, um, how am I going to do this? It might help to wrangle your data beforehand uh, prior to launching that app and trying to do the plotting. Um, so it's always easier to kind of prepare and clean your data first rather than do the finagling while you're trying to do the plot itself. All right, so that is the skis. Uh, let's take uh, some time to jump out into the lab and practice. <laughs> 